Good afternoon. This is Jeff J. Brown, China Rising Radio Sign to Land in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Before we get started, above and below, on YouTube, on uh, SoundCloud, on the website, plenty of opportunities to please make a donation, a one-time donation, or uh, with Patreon, I now have levels from $3 a month, which can actually even be a dollar a month on up so please make a donation for all the hard work I put into um, keeping you informed about uh, social justice for the 99 percent and the truth about China's uh, real story going back 5,000 years up to today thank you today it is entitled the truth about Tiananmen's tank man time to set the record straight Pictured above, the true sequence of photos of what happened with Tiananmen's tank man 31 years ago. An omitted truth is a lie, and there are many omissions about this story that continue to be vomited by the big lie propaganda machine, the BLPM. See for yourself. I'll walk you through the story. Here we go. Every 4 June, a famous photo from 1989 is splashed all over the world as a symbol against Chinese, quote, totalitarianism and, quote, bloodthirsty brutality. You know the one I'm talking about, Tank Man. It is flaunted like a Western talisman to celebrate freedom and rebellion in the face of communist socialist tyranny. Nonetheless, like all the projectile vomit spewed by the big lie propaganda machine, BLPM, you've been blatantly brainwashed for 31 ye long years. Many, a media, many media lies are perpetrated by omission. A truth untold is a lie, and Tank Man tops the list. Let's first look at the iconic image burned into every brain around the world. It shows a man standing in front of a column of military tanks near Tiananmen Square in Beijing, China. The BLPM has been hurling in your face for over a generation now, saying, It's one lone brave David who stopped the evil Goliath Communist Party of China, CPC, in its corrupt genocidal tracks as its Myrmidon PLA, the People's Liberation Army, rolled into Tiananmen Square to mow down and crush thousands of freedom-loving, peaceful protesters later that night who only wanted free market capitalism and Western democracy. Hmm, not really. Yet, I bet you'd go to your deathbed believing it all is fact. Let's see what really happened that day. Photo number one, which I is already above. First BLPM fake news. Tank Man was photographed on 5 June, the day after Tiananmen Square was cleared of protesters the night before. This has been certified by James Widener, the Associated Press journalist who took this now glorified photo, blasted around the world, although there were a handful of other photographers who were there too. Second BLPM fake news. Mr. Widener testified that the, columns, that the column of tanks was leaving Tiananmen Square, not entering it. Almost every BLPM photo has a caption saying something like this one. This is a real one. A celebrated image of a man trying to stop the tanks entering the square, Associated Press. In fact, you can see Tiananmen Square off in the distance, but you would never know it. I know this for a fact because I've driven across that same spot hundreds of times over the years. The BLPM vomits and vomits in your face 24-7. Also behind the tanks on the other side of the street, notice the burned out public bus. CIA trained saboteurs destroyed a lot of property the night before. In parentheses, see all my previous anniversary articles and the China Trilogy below, the latter in which I synthesize it all into a cohesive whole. End of parentheses. Photo number two. 
Third BLPM fake news. The man who stood in front of the lead tank was not a freedom-loving student protester, but a local citizen who was out shopping and going back home with his sacks full of purchases. He was almost all the way across Chang'an Boulevard, the one that runs east-west across the top of Tiananmen Square, saw the tank column coming his way, walked back into the center of the street to have some fun. Tiananmen Square being his neighborhood, he probably wanted to express his frustration at the five-week-long protest shutting down his streets and destroying so much property. No protesters were around to scold, so these tanks would, have, would do the trick. Being a regular citizen in the day after the biggest protest in modern Chinese history, to pull off such a cheeky, fun-loving stunt what does it tell you about his confidence in the government and military? Rachel Corey tried that in Palestine and was crushed to death by Zionists. Photo number three. Then the tank driver politely went out of his way to avoid hurting this man, trying to go left and then right and around him. Unable to pass, the tank shut off its engines, probably to avoid an unintended accident. Photo number four. Then Tank Man really had the time of his life and climbed up on, th on the front of the tank. Photo number five. Like most of us, he'd never gotten to see a real live tank up close, so he spent a couple of minutes checking out the really cool gear. He was especially fascinated with the covered mounted machine gun on the turret and spent a good minute admiring it. Heck, given the chance, most of us would love to inspect one too. Photo number six. As he was getting down, a soldier even opened the hatch to talk to Tank Man, asking him to please leave. This is never mentioned in the BLPM. They surely had sidearms on themselves and machine guns inside the tank. The soldier didn't wave a gun, shoot rounds over, the, over Tank Man's head or into the air. The crew member was just signaling him to please get out of the way. Compare this to a fascist country like the United States. In New York, a George Floyd protester last week stood up on the hood of a police car and got brutally pummeled by a swarm of Gestapo goons using billy clubs. I wouldn't want to pay his hospital bill if he was lucky enough to survive. I'm not exaggerating about possibly not making it. 2,000 Americans get killed every year while being arrested. That was the number reported in 2016. You can bet your sweet bippy that number of murdered is a lot higher now. Almost all of them are black, brown, red, yellow, and or poor. Racism and top-down class warfare are key. Anyway, back in socialist China, where there's real people's democracy, after Tank Man got back down, he, he stepped out of the way, signaling them to go ahead. This is not shown in the photo sequence, but can be seen in the short clip below. So the tank cranked up its motor to proceed, and they're really loud. I, I have heard them. And Tank Man again stepped in front of the lead tank. By this time, it was like a running joke. The two crew members stuck their heads out of the hatches and asked him again to please not block their way. They were signaling like this. You go. <laughs> having, lived and worked with the Chine having lived and worked with Chinese people for 16 years and seen how the cops and People's Liberation Army behave so civilly, I can just hear their conversation. Tank man, God damn it. For five weeks, my life has been totally fucked up by these protests, and I've had it up to here with all the disruptions. I'm sick of this shit. Now I can't even go shopping without a bunch of roaring loud army tanks ruining a perfectly quiet and beautiful morning. Tank driver. 
come on, man, it's hot as hell in here, and all of us have had a rough time with what has happened recently. Like you, we just want to go home and be with our families. Tomorrow's a new day, comrade. The big, li the big wheel of life keeps on turning. Thanks, brother. Tank Man was never threatened, never hurt. He was not afraid of his communist socialist government or the PLA. Frustrations were probably being felt on both sides, but they talked about it peacefully. Back in fascist America, get in the way of the oligarchic 1% Gestapo goons and like rabid dogs, you can get run down by their squad cars. Again in New York and in, quote, liberal, end of quote, California. However, getting back to Communist Socialist China, for the rest of the world, the above photo frame is the end of the story. The BLPM script ends there. I've even, see, I've even seen photo slash video sequences where the tank crew members talking to tank man are cut out or intentionally not mentioned. The rest is censored. From that point on, Tank Man's fake news photo saturated the world for weeks on end with huge headlines and printed t-shirts, putting words in his mouth like, Our freedom cannot die! China close to civil war! As I have written until I'm red in the face, since liberation in 1949, the Chinese have had and continue to have much more consensual participatory democracy than the West ever had in the last 2,500 years. Also, quote, close to civil war? Are you serious? It was desperate, wishful, imperial, global capitalist BLPM projectile vomit. Wrong on both counts. Thus, returning to Tank Man, no one usually gets to see the rest of the censored sequence. So what happened? Picture number seven, which is left out of the montage on, up above because I wanted a nice three by three and there, was, there were ten photos. But it's not that important. After getting back down and briefly messing with the tank a second time, other shoppers started crossing the street. Photo number eight. They all met in front of the lead tank, talking briefly together and with the two, two tank crew members whose heads were sticking out of the hatches waving at them. <laughs> One of the neighbors on their bicycle waved back to them, highlighted in the photo, probably saying something like, Sorry to slow you down, comrade. He's just tired and had a rough night with all the protests. Didn't sleep a wink. We've all had a tough time, haven't we? Take care, friend. And then photos 9 and 10. Then as a group, they scurried across the rest of the very wide Chang'an Avenue on their way home, like all pedestrians do when they see traffic coming down the street and want to get across before the vehicles pass. Photo number nine has an arrow pointing to Tank Man to show he's among the parting citizens. End of story. No guns, nobody shot, no brutality, nobody killed, nobody run over, nobody even got a scratch. The whole story boiled down to a homie from the Tiananmen hood. He had some chutzpah, a cheeky sense of humor, trusted his communist, socialist government and military, so he, he decided to vent his weeks of frustration in a very colorful and creative way. Luckily for him, he didn't live in the fascist police state Euranglaland, where protesters are violently attacked, shot at, run over, and killed as a matter of course. Here is a typical censored BLPM video from CNN omitting the truth that, la that Tank Man left safely, which is the series of photos 7, 8, 9, and 10. I've embedded it here for you, so if you can't get YouTube, you've got it already. I always feel very safe and relaxed when I'm in democratic China. When I go back to the United States, I'm scared to death to get pulled over by the cops and know that I can be shot on a whim with little to no recourse. 
It's rapidly reaching that point in my other country, France. The contempt and loathing that the West's aristocratic 1% has had and continues to harbor since ancient Greece knows no bounds. For them, we, us, <laughs> the 99% have always been and always will be untouchables, pariahs, deplorables, and subhuman garbage. Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism, Communism, Socialism is diametrically opposed to fascism. And that, my friend, makes all the difference. Tank Man lived to tell his story. Since the 15th century, George Floyd and uncountable millions of blacks, reds, browns, yellows, and are poor in your, in your Wranglo land have been getting exterminated like rats. And it is continuing unabated. That's the end of uh, this uh, article and podcast. Um, if you go to the original article, uh, I have previous Tiananmen Square anniversary articles and podcasts on China Rising Sinoland 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. This is Jeff J. Brown, China Rising Radio Sinoland in Chiang Mai, signing out. Have a wonderful day.